The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Hmm. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the midst of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. When I got discarded, narcissistically discarded, um, recently, I, um, that was the first, that, that was the first thing that I memorized was Psalm 23. When I was laying in bed at night and it was raining, I memorized this psalm, and uh, it was the only thing that I could do to keep my head from spinning, but man, I had to make this video. I have to share this with you. It is so powerful. If you are coming out of a narcissistically abusive relationship, or you're in one, or you don't know what to do, you've been discarded, or you need to exit the relationship, somehow you got to get out. Man, I'm going to tell you, Psalm 23 is a powerful message from God above <clears throat> on how to deal with being discarded or how to exit the narcissistic abusive relationship. And I'm going to go through it I'm going to go through each verse with you and tell you what it means to me and how it will help you get out of this narcissistic abusive relationship. Mm. Verse one, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It means lack. The, the verb is chaser. It's, a, it's written in the Hebrew language. And so I think it's interesting that God chose the Hebrew language and the Greek for the New Testament because they're the most descriptive languages in the world. So you've got the word chaser, which means to be lacking something or that will cause failure. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. The Lord in this verse means Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, he supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Mm. The shepherd feeds the flock. So he's feeding you. So this is the expanded translation. Jehovah is my friend who feeds me and takes care of me, and I will not be lacking in anything, and I will succeed. That is so powerful. The second verse, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Mm. He, 
he makes me lie down. It's a, it implies a crouching, resting position of a sheep or other animal in a state of relaxation and implies no fear of predators or starvation. <laughs> and he lie down in green pastures. The pasture, pastures are, fig, it's figurative for home. He makes you lie down in your home, which your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so your home is in God and God is inside of you. So he leadeth, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Now that word beside means upon or to be over something. <laughs> so he's leading me over the still waters, beside and over and upon the still waters, like Jesus walking on water. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. To means to settle down and rest. Coming out of an abusive, narcissistic relationship, man, that got a lot of downtime because you've been so busy trying to please the narcissist and do everything for the narcissist, and now it's your time to rest and rejuvenate. The expanded translation, I will lie down to rest in a pleasant and beautiful home that is filled with fresh food from the soil. He will protect and sustain me as he gently leads me over to a quiet, restful place by the water. Oh, it's so beautiful. Mm. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Restore means to return or retreat in the sense of going back to somewhere you have been before. You're going back home to God. He restoreth my soul. Soul is a verb which means to breathe and to be refreshed. Maybe in a sense of getting your breath back after being winded or maybe sitting in a fresh breeze when hot and tired. It means refreshing. God's trying to refresh you by bringing you out of the narcissistic relationship. Mm. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Lead, it means to guide someone to an unfamiliar place. And so it's so strange that your home with God, it feels unfamiliar to you. It felt unfamiliar to me. And I'll tell you why. It's because I was living for the narcissist. I was paying for the narcissist. I was uh, gas money. I was paying the bills for the nar. I was taking her on vacation. I was doing everything that I could think of and it was never enough. They want to suck the life out of you. For his name's sake, it means like a person's fame or reputation. Sake means uh, to pay attention. So the, this is the expanded translation. He will return my breath to me and I will be restored. He will guide me down the well-worn paths in the correct, correct direction because this is his character and his reputation. He's trying to show everybody. It gets even better, man. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The valley, it means a deep, narrow gorge, a place that is dark and frightening. And there are only two ways to go, back from where you, where you came or to continue on, but there is no exit. It's a. It means... 
arrogance and pride, a person who puts up high walls around himself, shutting himself off from the outside world like a gorge. Being in the narcissistic, abusive relationship, the narcissist has shut you off from the rest of the world. They have captured you and encaged you. They have put you in a psychological cage. And and it and it feels like it feels like death, man. They have they literally tried to kill you mentally, psychologically. And I will fear no evil for you are with me. The you it means a second person, masculine, singular. So this is crazy, man. So it says the rod and the staff. The rod is a stick or a rod that is used to discipline and is parallel with the next word, which means a stick. The staff means a stick, a branch, or a rod, but is closely related to the other words that mean support, the function of a walking stick. So <laughs> it's so it says, I will fear no evil for you are with me, thy rod and thy staff. And then it says, they comfort me. They is a third person. So you've got Jehovah is the shepherd and then the rod and the staff. I'm just thinking it's like the Holy Spirit and Jesus. I mean, so you got three people. You got Jehovah, the rod, and the staff that are disciplining you and comforting you. And that's why it feels so strange coming out of the narcissistic abusive relationship because it's like you're free, but also you've been in a cage and it's like you're fresh out of prison, man. You don't know how to behave because you've been institutionalized literally by the narcissist. Comfort to have comfort and consolation. So here's the expanded translation. In addition to all this, when I travel through a deep, dark, narrow gorge covered in the shadow of the dead, I will not be afraid of the bad things because you are beside me. Your staff of correction and your walking stick of support, they give me a sigh of relief and I am consoled. Mm. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Enemy, this is crazy, man. Think about this with the narcissist. The enemy, it literally means cramped up or being in a confined and a narrow place. So that means that you're the one who feels like you're confined you're the one who feels cramped up, but that's not the case. When God delivers you from the narcissistic abusive relationship, he sets you free and he cramps them. They're confined. You're free, but you don't know it. You just got to receive it and get to the place where you, where you know that, the, that God has set you free from this narcissistic abusive relationship. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. This is great. The cup, the cup, it means a cup or a bag of money. It can be implied that a cup is a concrete word used for one's holdings or possessions and context of the passage does imply this. So, Overflow, my cup runneth over, it overflows. It means overflowing with wealth. That's what it means to feel and satisfy with wealth. Man, I'm gonna tell you, since the narcissist discarded me, I mean, all of my needs are taken care of. Everything is supplied for me. I have more money, I have more food, I have more relaxation time. I've got more friends. Um, I'm free to do what I'm free to do what I want to do. So the, here's the expanded translation. It says, "You will put in order and arrange a meal spread out on the table in front of my face, boldly showing this in front of the enemy." 
that is pressing in on me. You will anoint my head with perfumed olive oil. All of my holdings and possessions will abundantly overflow to fill my needs. Man, that's, that is powerful. I, I'm going to tell you, if the narcissist discarded you and you're in a new place or you're in the same place where you lived with the narcissist, I suggest that you take some olive oil out and go over all the thresholds in your house and anoint them with the oil and claim all the thresholds that no evil presence will be able to come in your dwelling space and that uh, the blood of Jesus is in your dwelling place and no evil, demonic, narcissistic spirits will come and torture you anymore, any longer. It's Try it. Just get some olive oil and put it on your door and see what happens, man. It will set you free. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness is used in a wide variety of ways, but in the context of this verse, it implies the ideas of pleasure, beautiful, bountiful, cheerfulness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell, I will sit, I will re return to my home with God inside of me, the house or palace of God, the temple. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So here's the expanded translation. It is a sure thing that bountiful and beautiful things and kindness will chase after me. All the days of my life, I will remain and settle down in the place of Jehovah a very long number of days. So that it means surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That word follow, it means to chase after me. So goodness and mercy are chasing after me, okay? So no longer is the narcissist, no longer are you chasing the narcissist, okay? But now goodness and mercy is chasing you. God's goodness and God's mercy are chasing you. Man, I hope I helped you. I hope this spoke to your heart. And if you've been discarded, hang in there, man. I've been, it's been 99 days since um, I've been no contact with my narc. And um, I've had to let go of my narcissistic parents and my narcissistic children. But I'm at home with God. And so my prayer is that you will be too and memorize Psalm 23 and get it down in your soul, man. And, and when you, when your brain is squirrel caging and you're ruminating about this narcissistic relationship, focus on this prayer and recite it inside of you and meditate on it. I love you. Um, I, I thank you for supporting my channel and it is amazing what God is doing and, um, Happy narc slaying. That's how you slay the narc is you go back to God. Go back to where your home is in the Lord. Amen. See you next time.